and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. We usually cry for about a week. Don't start on injuries. My, my staff yeah, my, my stand responds to it is when I get injuries. That night I'll go out and have a few drinks and drown my sorrows. And then next day just sort of assess how bad it is, get, get yourself looked after. And then if it's not that serious, train around it as much as you can. Just you know, try and avoid the injury and look after it. Rehab work's really important as well. I mean, again, like getting your sports massages and stuff is really important. Physio treatment, and then just carry on. I mean. I mean, I, I did it myself just before Worlds. I tore my bicep at the top, literally 12 weeks before Worlds last year. Luckily, it wasn't serious enough to stop me trying. You know, I just had to be a bit careful on certain things and just got on with it. I think that in, in a strong man, I think we're always training around injuries. You get some guys that will get an injury and they'll be like, right, I need six weeks off the gym now. And it's kind of a silly thing to do. Unless it's a, if it's a serious injury, it's different. I mean, if you like, damage your spine or something like that, I can understand why people would take some time off. But you get someone will have a small injury on their elbow or something like that, and they go, oh, I can't train, or they'll have a little tiny bruise or something, and say, oh, I can't squat. Now, that's people looking for excuses. But if you're injured, if you train around it, it's actually going to speed the recovery, because you're pumping blood through your body. So you're getting new oxygen into that area, which is going to help with recovery. So I, I always kind of tell people to train around injuries, unless it's something it's good for your mind as well to keep yourself in a routine. Yeah. I, I did when um, I had the surgery on my, my arm in 2010. Literally, I had the surgery done and the following week I was back in the gym in a cast, you know, or with a, you know, what's it, a, yeah, literally a cast over my shoulder all down in the gym, getting my training parts to pass bundles up to my left arm and, you know, using the hack squat machines. But it was, it was good for my mind to keep myself in the gym and keep motivated. You did like hip bumps. Yeah. I, I did as well, I took my bicep, but it just, just keeping the legs strong will mean you're, you're, when you are fully recovered, you'll get back to your top like, um, standard much, much faster than if you just totally break and then you're like, you've got to build up from scratch almost because you've done nothing for however long. It's easy to sit there feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. The best way is just to get yourself back in there and get on with it. Yeah. Have, have one night feeling sorry for yeah. yourself. That's and enough. That's enough. <laughs> that's and then enough. you've got to wake up the next morning and move on. I mean, obviously for like guys like us who are doing it professionally, but you know, if you're just doing it as a hobby. It's... I mean, I think it's a big part of why, I mean, I'm not trying to make myself sound like a hero, why I got to work in 2010 after the surgery. I, you know, the, the doctors didn't want me to go, they were really unsure. Part of the reason I did manage to get back so quick was one, I did the right things at the right time with physio treatment and stuff, and also, because I kept myself in the gym, I kept doing the hip belt squats, hack squats, one arm dumbbell presses. It, one, I was still motivated, and two, I kept everything else strong. Although that arm was weak, or everything else was still pretty much there. And I think that that also, you know, helps the recovery. Like Loz said, we're keeping the blood flow and keeping everything sort of working as it should. Yeah, because you were really, um, really sort of. Uh couldn't quite work out the Africa stuff, could you? No. It was really worrying. I mean, it, it, it just, it just well, that, yeah, I mean, it, yeah. that was more of a sort of mental thing, yeah. I think. Just a bit scared because it was so close yeah. to the surgery. Just picking up off the floor as well. Yeah. Well. I mean, for like any kind of skeletal injury or muscle, like muscle kind of injury, I would definitely avoid going to the doctors. Just go to the physio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because good physio, good a physio. good physio that knows about sport. Because I've, I've been to doctors, loads of injuries. Right. They don't even diagnose what the injury is sometimes. Um, so I've got um, a chiropractor and a physio that I go to regularly, um, which is very important for like doing like what we do because you're basically you're damaging your body, so you need to try and get it treated regularly so you, you're fit and healthy. But um, yeah. if you can afford it, I mean, it's, it's good to see. Just, you know, once every kind of couple of months or something, just to keep your body ticking over. Um, I would definitely recommend seeing a physio, and if you can, a chiropractor as well. For peace of mind, keep yourself topped up. You have an MOT every other week. I, I go to the chiropractor once every six weeks um, if there's nothing wrong with me, just to kind of keep me checked up and then obviously a, a lot more if I need to. And I see the physio usually once or twice a month. Any other? Sort of <laughs> 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 uh, I, I, I only eat about. 5,000 calories a day. Um, there's guy, I mean, Brian Shaw eats, what, 
every two hours he eats like a Sunday lunch. <laughs> I mean, he treats it as a job, though. That, that guy is kind of like, his eating is his job. And he'll cook it all, have like a big bowl of like, mince and rice, and just every two hours. He was going down to breakfast at Worlds, knowing he's going to have a breakfast with a protein shake. Already done that. Not just a protein yeah. shake, a get, like a yeah, meal like replacement shake. Thousand calorie shake, big, like, a, a, well over a pint. Yeah. He smacked that before you even had, even even thought about his breakfast. And then as he as he put that on the table, he's starting to make his waffles and his eggs and everything. It's just and then he, he'll eat that and go for another one. And it's, it, like you say, it's a it's a full time profession for Brian. Just I, mean, I, 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 I find doing it yeah, like I can't. I, I like my food, so I just like to be able to kind of sometimes have times of the year where I just eat what I want when I want. But if, I'm, if I have a big competition coming up that I'm trying to really focus on, I try to eat six times a day and break each meal down so you've got um, good types of carbs, good types of fats, protein, and either in the morning I'll have fruit, and then for the rest of the meals it'll be like some type of vegetables. Um, sometimes I'll replace one of them with like a meal replacement shake, and I'll, I usually have like a shake during training and afterwards. But that's when I'm being good. <laughs> The rest of the time, it's deep what I want. Training for the Arnolds, I'm eating what I want. <laughs> just because it's it's such a heavy static competition. You just need calories. Tom and I will choose. I mean, before you're quite sensible with your food, and, you, and you're not sat at home eating sort of beef dripping with your toast, you can pretty much get away with eating you know, normal foods. It's just, you know. What supplements do you take? Protein? <laughs> yeah, protein's key and then... Creatine? Yeah, so I'll, I'll take a, a BCAA. BCAAs, yes. multivitamins. Yeah. Um, I've tried to get a fan of creatine because it, it gives me crap. Yeah. <laughs> I like creatine. Of course, uh, of course, myself working for the joints. Yeah. The good um, uh, vitamin C. Probably one of the best ones. I'll take a lot of vitamin C. There's a lot of supplements out there. Kind of. It's not necessary. There's so many fancy kind of yeah, stuff. Fancy stuff. Yeah. A lot of it's just pointless. I would stick with the basic things. If you can afford the basic things and then you can afford to get more, they get more. But stick with protein is your number one. Um, I would use creatine. The protein I've got is called creatine. Yeah. Um, I, I would say those are the kind of two staples. BCAAs yeah. after that. Um, definitely a multivitamin. Um, and then if you want to go on top of that, then you can. There's, there's so much to choose from, but I think it just gets complicated if you... I think that's the best way to go, just keep it simple. Yeah. Exactly like what Lars just said, that's pretty much all I use in terms of, in terms of um, supplements. I um, quite like, um, like a stimulant drink, something like before. Yeah, yeah, yeah pre-workout drink. Pre-workout drink. Sorry? Do we use like NRX uh, uh, CFP. Jack 3D. Yeah, I use my CFP. CFP. Tell him it's CFP. It's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so heavy that most of the guys aren't as lean as they used to be. Um, but you've got guys like Poundstone, who's very lean, uh, but he's 150 kilos as well um, of muscle. That's, that's still a very, very big man. Um, I think guys, the guys that struggle now, and um, I don't think you'll mind me saying this because I'm a good friend of him, someone like Darren Sadler, who was about 120 kilos, 
guys like Yu Huaza, who was world's strongest man at 120 kilos, I think that the, the days of those guys winning worlds are gone. Because as strong as Darren is, and believe me, he's very, very strong, and he, he, he can still beat the top guys at a lot of events. There's too many events now where body weight counts. And, you know, like on a truck pull, he will always come last against the best guys. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good your technique is, you can't, you can't give away 80 kilos to someone and, and expect to beat them on those kind of events. So, I mean, I, I think the, the better question, I mean, in terms of a lot of people are, oh, is it important to carry a test back? It's not, it, I would say it's, it's not important at all, but when you've got guys like Brian, who perhaps is carrying a bit of excess weight, no problem, and he's probably one of the best conditioned guys there. I mean, he's as fast as anyone, he's as fit as anyone there. I mean, even when it came to the flexibility test, he was better than anybody there at 200 kilos. It's, I mean, and the thing is, a lot of the excess weight is, is a result of all the eating and stuff like that. You're trying to gain as much muscle as possible. And if you're doing that, you're probably going to be in excess of carbs and excess of calories, which you are going to, you know, a side effect to that would be gaining a bit of extra weight as well. I mean, I think like Loss said, gone are the days where the really lean guys are, you know, going to be doing well at World's Strongest Man. That's just my opinion. It's, it's the weights have moved on that much that you will find the, you know, the bigger guys are the ones that are doing well. I mean, it's if you look at the podium at World's Strongest Man this year, the lightest guy was a Drews. Yeah. <laughs> and he was what 175 yeah. kilos. Well, I mean, they said it was a, the average weight between all the guys in the final, top 10 guys, 160 kilos. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's cool. the, at the moment as the sport is. I mean, it's, it's big guys are all that tends to be. Yeah, uh, I think you're absolutely right. You've got to, you can have the excess weight, but you don't have to have the excess weight, but you need to be able to be conditioned to do the events and you need to be able to be strong enough. Um, if you can carry the excess weight, it's not a problem, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's the one. You know, in, in, the, in the final, it was only, only um, Carlsdon has a six pack. Yeah. Uh, and me, obviously. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.